Today's shed project is to fill this gap with another motorcycle silhouette. This is a very simple plasma cutter project. I found a silhouette that I like, printed it out, and now it's just a simple matter of using a craft knife to cut out all the bits inside. I'm going to use this as the template and then draw it onto the piece of steel. This is a pretty tedious process, but it's got to be done. Preparation is everything with most projects, and this one's no exception. Now it's down to the shed. I've got a piece of 2mm thick steel, and I've scaled the silhouette so that it just fits into it nicely. Now for the next tedious bit, I'm going to trace around both the outside and all the inside bits. So I'm just using a bit of masking tape to hold it in place so that it doesn't move around while I'm tracing it. I'm using a whiteout pen for this process. I found previously that um, the whiteout pen both burns away nicely with the plasma cutter and also you can see it quite clearly when you're cutting. I tried black marker in a previous project, but that didn't work at all. Alrighty then, that's all done. The tedious part's finished, and the fun part is now to begin. I'm just using my cheap plasma cutter for this process. There's any number of brands out there that you can buy for only a couple of hundred dollars, and this works absolutely fine. And the consumables, the tip bits, are really cheap. And as you know, it only uses compressed air. To make sure the power setting is correct for this steel, I just start on a corner away from the project and see whether it cuts okay. Yep, that's fine. My little plasma cutter is a tap start. So you tap it to get the arc started and then you hold it just above the material. The problem with plasma cutting is that there's no friction and so it's very difficult to get a nice straight line. So I'm actually supporting my right hand with my left hand and then trying to, to create a smoother arc, as an arc as I can. But you can never get it perfect. Well, I certainly can't. And if you can possibly do it, start inside the line and then go towards the line. Otherwise you get sort of a start and end point some of these are so small that that's not possible, but a lot of them are. I find using the plasma cutter so rewarding. It feels so powerful to be able to cut through steel really quite quickly. Obviously this is sped up for your enjoyment but it really takes no time at all to cut out a pattern like this.
Okay, there, there it is dropped on the floor. I mean, there it is, a finished, well, finished cutting it out anyway. With the plasma cutter and a straight line, you can get almost no dag on the back. But when you've got to slow down and go around corners, etc., I usually find that there's dags there. Some of them will knock off, but many of them won't. So after I knock off the, the worst ones, I need to use the angle grinder for the rest. And I'm using a 40 grit flap disc for this job. And in no time at all, it's ready for painting. I've wiped it over with some methylated spirits to make sure there's no greasy bits on it. And now I'm just using a kill rust type spray can of satin black. And even hanging up here you can see that it doesn't look too bad. The kill rust paint takes a fair while to dry, so it's the next day, back in the shed, and it's time to hang it on the wall. It takes quite a bit of expert help from the boss to make sure I get it in the right place, and then I'm just securing it with one bolt and then a bit of double sided tape on the bottom. Well, that was a simple and fun little shed project completed. Thanks for watching.